First of all, I, got, I was in the back, and I got to hear a good portion of Vanessa's presentation, and I was sitting there thinking, Alice Walton and I supposedly have been friends for God only knows how long. I don't know, 40 years or something, long time. But she has had a terrible habit over this long expanse of putting me in difficult positions. <laughs> so now she wants me to follow Vanessa? I'm an old gray-haired white guy in a suit. I don't have a chance. <laughs> so <laughs> this reminds me of the time when Alice decided that she wanted to support me for governor, which in itself was an effort. Just because we were friends didn't mean I was going to get her support. And she lived in this, she had a farm outside town, and she had llamas there. But she also had a, a riding arena, and she was into cutting horses which require strong legs, because you don't have to go fast forward, you have to go sideways well to cut the livestock out. And so I started asking her about it, and she said, oh, you're gonna do it. I said, what do you mean? She said, I'm not giving you this money I've raised unless you go out there and ride a cutting horse and separate some of the livestock. Look at that, she's acting innocent. <laughs> and I thought, my God, I'm governor, I'm gonna spend the rest of my term on a stretcher, <laughs> but I rode the horse, so I guess I can follow Vanessa. <laughs> First of all, thank you all for being here, and I, I want to thank you for being here. I, I think you've already figured out Crystal Bridges is a perfect venue for what you've been discussing, and um, I want to thank every contributor, but Vanessa, I especially want to thank you for what you were doing in Philadelphia to prove the most important part of this, which is that talent, imagination, dreams are pretty well evenly distributed across the human race, and the opportunity to express them is not. And that's one, not the only, but one of the reasons we have as many troubles as we do in the world. I didn't even intend to talk about this, but I'm going to. If you look at all the things you're reading about in the press today, that are really bad news stories. Did ISIS pick up another village in Syria or getting closer to the Turkish border? It's all about identity. Why these, wouldn't that 19 year old boy in Chicago want to get on an airplane and go blow himself up for ISIS for? Why did two blonde haired blue eyed Austrian girls try to get on a plane in Vienna and go there and blow themselves up for ISIS? because they have a negative sense of identity that swamps any sense of our common humanity. Thinks all of our differences are all that matter. Our differences, every non-age-related difference in this room, scientifically, is rooted in one half of 1% of your genome. That is, every difference you can see between us, including gender, race, body shape, air color, eye color, everything is in one half of 1% of your genome. Most of the problems come from the fact that we don't have 99.5% of the same kind of opportunities to find our way in life and to find a home we can share with other people. The relevance of this conference the relevance of the outreach of Crystal Bridges to the past, because you come in and see a 17th century Dutch Jewish New York trading family as the opening paintings to connect us to the future by bringing in all these school children here and working to support school programs in our state that are putting the arts back into the school. And now the effort to go all across America and bring in these diverse artists from different communities and different experiences to get us together, it really is the work of humanity in the 21st century. We simply cannot escape each other. And nobody's gonna be able to tell everybody, every, anybody what to do all the time anymore. Power is too diffuse. 
So this diffused power, we have to make up our mind, is it going to be used for negative or positive purposes? Is it going to be used to exalt one set of identities at the expense of everybody else in a negative and sometimes murderous way? Or is it going to be used to make life more interesting because differences are interesting? Which is only possible to appreciate if you think our common humanity matters more. Therefore, I think it is highly likely that the ability of democratizing the arts, that is making it available to more people, and giving more people a chance to develop their own talents will wind up being one of the most important strategies we can pursue to build a future we can all share and live with. Otherwise, we'll all be forced by insecurity to define our identities in ever more negative terms against, by reference to what we're against and what we're for. And it is unlikely that we will do what is necessary to save the planet and manage it in the face of seven and a half billion people, soon to be nine, much less how we manage our differences. Being exposed to the arts, having it in school increases academic performance, increases self-confidence. We can see it in Arkansas. Oklahoma picked 18 schools in the poorest neighborhoods and put that A-plus program in there, integrating the arts into the whole academic performance. Every one of those schools is outperforming the statewide average, even though the profile of their kids is lower. And every place we've done it in Arkansas, we've gotten the same results. So, what I believe is that most of the next 25 years will be occupied in furious struggles, positive and negative, to define the terms on which we will all relate to each other in the world in the 21st century. Because the level of our interdependence is strange to us. The level of dispersal of power, thanks to the internet, and social media and technology is strange to us. And we're kind of coming to grips. You've been reading about all these demonstrations in Hong Kong. The Chinese government's sitting there trying to think about, don't they understand? Of course we can put out an election slate and only run the people we want. We control everything. And then they realize, but if I do a tenement square, what I did 25 years ago, if I do that today, God only knows what will happen. Maybe I'll let those kids stay in the street and sing their songs and give their messages and do their things. It's a different world. It also means that ISIS can get on the internet and sing some siren song and convince some alienated kid half a world away that the only way they can find meaning in life is to show up and help them kill people too. We're in a struggle to define the terms of our unprecedented interdependence. It has been going on always, I suppose, in some way or another, but in earnest, more or less since the Berlin Wall fell. And I figure we're about halfway through a 50-year struggle to try to find a way to celebrate our diversity, be glad for our differences, and be at home in them because we know our common humanity matters more. We can only do it if we create a shared future. So essentially, you're gonna have this struggle manifest in a thousand ways between people who wanna share the future and people who wanna control it by negative reference to others. You can't do art. You can't embrace more people. You can't give more people the chance to fire their imagination and calm their spirits, to expand their dreams and steal their resolve to do something truly beautiful. You can't do that with negative interdependence. You can only do it with positive interdependence. You can't do it by obsessing about all the people you'd like to hurt you against and never thinking enough about what you would like to create and who you would like to embrace. In the end, that's why this is really important. You can't do art unless you actually believe it's a good thing to gather up people who see the world differently from you. Unless you believe that the experiences in that neighborhood in Philadelphia have relevance for people who were millionaires their whole lives. 
You can't do it. And if you want to build a future we can all share, we have to develop the minds of our children, which exposure to arts helps. We have to develop the emotional range of our people. And we have to have a confidence in the level, in the face of uncertainty that many of us are unused to having. I was always impressed with the Irish during all the times, all the troubles were going on. Is no matter what happened, they still got up and went to work the next day. The British, no matter what happened, they got up and they went to work the next day. They realized that, okay, I'm not in total control of everything, but the chances are I'll have a pretty good day today. The Israelis managed to preserve their democracy no matter what happened. And now have a position of strength where they have to ask themselves what more they'll have to do to preserve their democracy given the changing demography of their neighborhood. It's not an easy time to be alive, but it is a thrilling time to be alive. It is more full of possibility than any period in human history. And we can't afford to shut out any voices or shut up any talent. We have to let, we have to trust human nature. I believe if we create more opportunities for good things than bad things, good things will prevail. Positive interdependence will triumph over negative interdependence. Most people down deep inside are good if they're given a good chance to be good. And those who aren't will be smaller in number and far more manageable if they see the rest of us making an effort to give all our children a chance to live our dreams, including all of our artists, a chance to spread their wings. I didn't even intend to talk about this until I saw you, and I realized that's what this is all about. Thank you very much.